Hey everybody. Hey everybody, it's Liz. Um, this is something I've never ever done before. So let me explain. Of course, it's Thursday night, 5 p.m. Pacific, and you have tuned in for Satellite Sisters Presents Cooking with Liz 2022. That's what year it is, in case you've lost track. My theme for the whole year is flourish. The uh, this show, it's basically me learning how to cook. Even though it's called Cooking with Liz, it's, you know, it's more of a Liz learns to cook operation. So it stars, I'm a satellite sister, so it's me and my sous chef, Hooper Dolan, who is walking around on the floor back there. Maybe, you, oh, you can, did you hear that? He was just shaking himself off. So anyway, so Hooper Dolan is my sous chef, which means he's in charge of eating anything that falls on the floor. And this is the first time I have ever done an episode that is a special memorial episode. It's rest in peace, Virginia Capra, Mama Capra, as we know her here on, on Cooking with Liz. You know, my motto is peace and sauce. And uh, when I started doing this show, you know, when everything started during the current unpleasantness, it was in week 10 of me just standing here alone in my kitchen, learning how to cook, that one of my oldest and dearest friends, Mark Capra, said, well, why don't I teach you how to make my mama's marinara? Now, Mark is one of my oldest and dearest friends. He has spent many, many nights, oh, over many decades, I might add, cooking for me. And I just try to be an appreciative guest and talk a lot and have fun. So obviously I'm holding up my end of the bargain because I'm constantly invited back for dinner. And uh, and he's certainly holding up his end of the bargain because he is a wonderful friend and a great cook. So he had often made this marinara sauce. So he said, let me, let me teach you how to make mama sauce. So that's what I did. And if you go back to my early videos, I've posted a few in the Satellite Sisters Facebook book group, you'll see there were actually three episodes of Mark explaining to me how to do this, then I'm doing it, and then he's sort of rating me on how I did. So then I did a fourth episode in the summer of, I don't know, 1970, 2020, I don't remember, two summers ago, the summer of 2020, remember, I did the sauce of the summer contest, where I had like the best sauces I had made on cooking with Liz, and we all decided which one was the best. So it was Mama Capra's marinara sauce that was the best. So as Leon said, Mama Capra has already had a four episode arc, and well deserved, Mama. But Mama Capra passed away last week at the age of 96. She was just, she was a great lady. I loved visiting her. And luckily for me, I went to visit Mama and Mark just right at the end of the year in November, I was visiting them. So I had a chance to see her and she was doing pretty well considering she was a 96 year old woman who had just gotten over COVID, if you can believe it. Anyway, we had a really nice visit and we talked about how long we had known each other, which is just a very, very long time. And there's something really nice about having friends in your life for a long time and then the parents of your friends in your life for a long time. So anyway, so my motto is peace and sauce and it's never more perfect than for tonight because Virginia Capra, rest in peace. I miss you already. And sauce, well, you were the sauce of the summer. So I thought I can do this all in one episode. I no longer need three episodes to make marinara sauce. So I thought that's what I would do for you tonight. I tried to post the recipe in a few places. The recipe is posted in the notes for this video, so you should see that. I also put a link in the chat, Stephanie Weaver, longtime satellite sister, and she does her own cookbooks, um, a migraine relief cookbook. She has a version of this in her cookbook, so I put a link into that. And Leon is going to put the recipe in tomorrow's edition of Pep Talk. So if you're not subscribed for our weekly newsletter, what are you waiting for? It's the perfect time. If you just go to our website, satellitesisters.com, the, the sign-in box will pop up. You can sign in. I promise we don't sell your address. We don't even know how to do that. You'll just get a super peppy email, basically from Leanne, every Friday that includes all sorts of fun things, including tomorrow when it will include Mama Capra's recipe. 
So, okay. So let's just make some sauce, right? Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, so here's my version that I typed out from, Mark had like a handwritten thing. It had stains all over it. So here we did. I'm gonna pull this a little bit closer to, I'm already heating up the oil, by the way, in case anyone is wondering about that. Okay, so this has all been explained to me and I feel like I have learned well. So thank you, Mama, and thank you, Mark. So the most important thing in this sauce is that you have to have the real San Marzano Italian tomatoes. And there are a lot of things masquerading as San Marzano tomatoes, but I'm told you should not fall for them. That they, they these are like grown, what is it? Oh yeah, grown next to Mount Vesuvius. So there's some Vesuvian quality to these tomatoes that you must have for your marinara. There's a map on the back of this can if you wanna if you wanna just verify uh, where my tomatoes are. So you got you got these. Then uh, eight to ten cloves of garlic. Eight to ten cloves of garlic. Now one thing Mark always says to me, which is going to be today's sticky note. This is the sticky note of today's session. Don't be afraid, Liz. That's what he always says. Don't be afraid of the garlic. Don't be afraid of putting in too much pepper. Don't be afraid. Just go for it. Don't be afraid. So today's theme is don't be afraid. So I'm just going to put up today's sticky note so we can remember, don't be afraid of the garlic. And I see that my sister Monica is here in the chat already. Monica, you're not a total garlic lover, right? So if you were in my kitchen right now, the smell, smell of garlic is so overwhelming, it might take you out. But anyway, the rest of you, don't be afraid. So I'm going to put this up here. Don't be afraid. So can you see where I chopped all this garlic already? I mean, okay. That's a lot of garlic. That's a lot of garlic. And I have plenty more. So, okay, so the chopped garlic, the fresh basil, nice handful, chopped well. This is where I went wrong the first time I made this. And Mama told Mark to tell me. First of all, what does a handful mean? You know, I'm, I'm trying to teach myself not to do so much eyeballing. So when I see a recipe that says a handful, like, I don't know how much that is. Anyway, just a lot of garlic. Just don't, I mean, <laughs> basil. Don't be afraid of the basil. Okay, so that's what I'm saying, Liz, today. Don't be afraid of the basil. Get a nice handful. And last time, uh, Mama Capper said, I did not chop it well enough. The pieces were too big. So I was going to wait till you got here so you could see me chop it. Um, but I also wanted to point out the basil I got is, I thought because this is a special memorial, for Virginia Memorial Marinara Sauce that I would get the, the living basil. And I got two of these, one and see there's another one over there. And so I'm just gonna grow my basil in my kitchen in memory of you, Virginia. So whenever I think of getting a big handful of basil and chopping it well, I will think of you. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so what would be a handful of basil? What do you think? Like. You think that's a handful? I think that's a handful. Okay, hang on. Can you see me close enough? I'm gonna see if I can. Once again, I have my laptop delicately balanced on top of one, two, three, four FabFitFun boxes. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to make sure I chop this well. Remember when I bought this good knife? This was right about the time, the summer of 2020, when I was realizing I did not have the right implements to be a good cook. So there we go. So we got that. So, oh my God, the basil smells so good. So, so good. Okay, so now, okay, I'm gonna get some of this going because, once again, let me move the box. Um, the olive oil is hot. So the recipe says, Heat large pot with olive oil. When oil is very hot, add the garlic and saute until golden. So that is very hot. So that's what I'm doing now. 
Woohoo! That is very hot. That oil is very hot. Saute until golden. Let me, you know what I'm doing here. Getting out the Betty. Gonna say, okay. Whoa. That sauteed up really fast. I'm even gonna turn that down. Ooh, that garlic brown super fast. Okay, I don't know if you can see that in there. Okay, so gonna keep moving here. Um, then when that's done, I add two cans of tomato, basil, sugar, red pepper. Oh, I forgot to get that out. I have the red pepper flakes, vodka, red wine, salt, and pepper. So here we go. This, oh my God, that ground up super fast. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Here go the San Lorzano's. Watch it list. Thank you, Monica. Okay. Well, you didn't even get to see that. Okay. That is pretty hot in there. Okay. Okay. So that was two of these went in there. Okay. Okay, so the tomato, the basil, all right, the basil I just cut. So I'm putting that in there. There you go, Virginia, is that enough basil for you? Is that cut small enough? So I'm gonna, okay, spoon that around. Sugar, okay, I got how much sugar do I put in here? Blah, 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 tablespoon of sugar. So I have, I have a sugar bowl. Okay. Get out a teaspoon, tablespoon. Look at me using all my measuring implements. Okay, there you go. That's a tablespoon of sugar going in there. Okay, hang on. All right, um, sugar, red pepper. Oh, hang on one second. You, you can just watch that for me. I'm gonna get my red pepper flakes out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, you watching that for me? Red pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. Oh, darn. The red pepper flakes are super important and I forgot to get them out. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Are they in here? Okay, I got some of the red pepper flakes. Okay, all right. Okay, red pepper flakes coming right up. So I got that. All right. This says half a teaspoon. So, okay, red pepper flakes. I'm gonna put in a little extra because what I loved about this sauce is that it has a lot of kick. And I think, that's right, Monica, I was rummaging in the larder, the red pepper. So I think that's too much red. Okay, so maybe I should measure that. Here's this, okay, this is supposed to be half a teaspoon. Let me see if I can get out half a teaspoon. Okay, this is half a teaspoon. Okay, so, so I did have twice as much. So I'm gonna put that in and a little bit more because that's the way I like it. Okay. So here we go. So there you go. You see that happening there? So I'm gonna stir that around some more. Okay, now is a really key deviation I'm going to make from the printed recipe. Um, Mark's version of the recipe calls for both vodka and red wine. It calls for a quarter a cup of vodka and a quarter a cup of dry red wine. But then when I made it in 2020 and Mama Capra was watching, she disapproved entirely of the red wine. And Mark had to confess afterwards that, well, he added that. He thought instead of double the vodka, he thought it was that the red wine added a little more flavor. But because this is in memory of our beloved Mama Capra, I'm doing it Mama's way. I'm just going to go with the vodka and I'm leaving out the red wine. Sorry, Mark. So here we go. So I measured that out. Okay. I've got some Tito's vodka. No Russian vodka around here. So Tito's vodka. And 
I measured that out. Again, look at me, measuring, measuring. What is it? Okay, it said a quarter cup of vodka in marks. So I doubled that, and we have half a cup of vodka going in there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that's going in there. Can you guys see that? Okay. And let me just turn this up a little bit more. Okay. Uh, and then salt and pepper. So salt. And here's another thing about these Italian recipes. Mark says you just have to cook from your soul and you have to keep tasting it. And it's like, could you just tell me how much salt? Just tell me. So the, this recipe actually just says generous amount. It's like you people with your generous amounts and your handfuls. So oh, here we go. I'm just going to put in a, a generous amount of salt. And this is just basic kosher salt. And pepper. I don't have any fancy pepper. I'm all out of the fancy pepper. So you got, you know, you have your Safeway signature brand. Uh, okay, going to put in a generous amount of the pepper. And okay, so that, let me just read back through the list. Taste as you go. That's right. Garden Poet just told me, taste as I go. Whoa. It's a lot of vodka. I know all the vodka cooks off, but right now it basically tastes like vodka. Okay, so I'm just going to review again. Two cans, tomatoes, basil, sugar, red pepper, vodka, red wine, salt, and pepper. Done. So bring to a boil. So that's what I'm going to do. So hold on. Ooh, now I'm going to stand up. Bring it to a boil and then turn down the heat and simmer for an hour. So we're not going to be here for the whole hour. I'm just going to talk you through what's going to happen after we're gone. Then after one hour, use a potato masher to mash the whole tomatoes. Mama Capra felt it was very important to cook the tomatoes as whole tomatoes and then mash them up. And believe it or not, somewhere here, yes, you're thinking, what are the chances Liz owns potato masher? Aha, I do. So I have that ready to go. I will leave that right here. And so then you mash up the, and then you cook it on low for another 30 minutes, and then you taste for spices. So by then, hopefully a lot of that vodka will have cooked off, and I'll go in and I'll taste. Maybe it'll need some more salt and pepper. Maybe it won't. Then you make the linguine. Then you, um, you put the linguine on the plate, and then you ladle two to three uh, cups from the ladle, uh, into the linguine pot and cook it over a low flame and and then you add some Romano and Parmesan. So the ladle, I just wanted to um, point this out that last time I made this, I didn't really have a ladle or I thought I didn't. I had a bunch of like plastic things. But then you were watching and in the background you saw that, well, like, what is that list? It looks like you have a ladle there. Looks like you have a nice big ladle here. So when I made this two years ago, you can go back and you can look at the videotape and you can see this. When I did the final version, I found the ladle. And as my main spoon is called the Betty, my main label, my ladle, has been called the Virginia in honor of Virginia Capra for two years now. So, so Virginia, again, rest in peace. I will be ladling your sauce a little bit later. That's what I will be having for dinner. And I will be thinking of you. Okay, so here we go. This is starting to boil. Can you see that? Smells super good. So bring to a boil and then turn down. So now is the point at which I'm going to turn it down and simmer. So here's a question for the people, the people at Dow who are cooks. So I turn it down to simmer it. Should I put the top on? This is one of the things I never know. Is it supposed to just simmer? away like simmer down or or do I put this on it you tell me it's an open question form I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on it for now and then I will look at your answers so okay let me just who this is just no you're saying no don't put the top on okay Shelly says no is that right Monica says no top let it simmer down. No top. Okay. All right, I'm taking the top off. Here you go. 
I'm going to take the top off. The Garden Poet says you do put on the cover. Okay, I'm going to take it off for a little while, then I'm going to put it on for a little while, and I'm going to set the timer so we get the full hour. Okay. Okay. So, who? all right. So, that's what's going to happen here. So, after an hour, I use the potato masher. Now, here's what I want to say. I know many people in the Satellite Sisterhood, including many in my own family, who have really become addicted to Mama Capra's marinara. Our brother Dick, right, Monica? Monica's in the chat. Dick makes it like once a month, big batches, and he fills up. This is what I'm going to do. You know, you fill up the big mason jars, and you got yourself some sauce, some sauce that's going to be delicious on everything. Now, Mark said, in addition, this is kind of a light sauce, strongly flavored, but light sauce, that in addition to putting it on pasta, that it's really good on fish or really good just on vegetables. So anyway, Dick Dolan, he makes himself a lot of mama. I think Monica said she just had some at his house a week or two ago. So that's good. And as I said, longtime listener Stephanie Weaver adapted the recipe for her cookbook. So you got to love that. I know many of you make it because it's the best. So this is why you need, you know, an Italian mama. Oh, there's Monica in the chat. Our brother Dick made this for us a couple of weeks ago with big chicken parmesan and spaghetti. Wow. Okay. I'm coming over for that. So, all right. So let's see what else I wanted to say. Okay. I wanted to, uh, before we close up here, I want to show you. Ooh, okay. Hang on. Hold on. My computer just opened a whole bunch of documents. No Skype for business. I don't need you. No, go away. Close, close, close. Closing now. Okay. So I wanted to show you a picture because as I say, Virginia was a, uh, she was 96 when she passed away last week, but she was just like incredibly great. Even though she'd been in a wheelchair for a while, super strong. I told the story on the podcast that, you know, Mark has lived all over the world and often his mother lived with him. And so he lived in Brazil for a long time and she lived there with him in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I went there to visit them a bunch of times. And I remember one time arriving at Mark's and hello, hello, hello. And his mom lived in the apartment downstairs. And I was like, can I go downstairs and say hello to your mother? And he said, no, she's at the racetrack with her caregiver. So Virginia was out with her caregiver betting on the ponies. So that, that's your Virginia Capra, born and raised in the Bronx, and now has spent this really interesting life living all over the world with her, um, with her son, Mark. So let me, I'm going to, I want to show you a picture of her. Mark posted some really nice ones in, uh, on his Facebook page. So here she is. That's Virginia, just a beautiful lady. Even that picture is not old. Nine, that's a good look at 96. And then there's another really nice one. This is one. This is Virginia at Mark's uh, wedding to his husband, Wallace. So that was pretty recent, too. So anyway, just a lovely lady, a great cook. She taught Mark everything she knows about cooking. And Mark has taught me one or two things. But mainly he has fed me. So, okay. So there you have it. These kind of family recipes. I've made a I've made a bunch of things that Edna Dolan made. It's just kind of fun to know the story behind the recipes and be able to pass them along. I can't believe I'm even saying this. Two years ago, I didn't even cook. And now I'm into family recipes. And they don't have to be my family. They're the Capra family recipes. Just as good. Just as good. We don't have any Italian uh, family recipes in the uh, in the Dolan family. I don't know what like the Irish food that got passed down from generation to generation. Hmm. There's your Irish lamb stew, your soda bread. I think that's pretty much, pretty much it in the Italian, in the uh, Irish cuisine. Uh, but our mom's family was German. So she did, she was really good at like sauerkraut and pork chops and things like that. Um, okay. So as I said, this is a special episode, you know, people you love, who love food and teach you how to make it. This seemed like a really good place to um, to do this special salute in time. So I poured myself a little glass of the red wine. 
Virginia, this is the red wine that I did not put in the sauce because you said you didn't want that, but I will still be toasting you with the red wine. And as always, I want to end this, well, with two things. Remember, the first is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's a good thing. Whether it's garlic or anything else, don't be afraid. And the second, of course, is peace and sauce. So peace and sauce to everyone. I will announce on the podcast on Tuesday what my next cooking is going to be and, and when it will be. I try to do these Thursday nights, but you never know. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because that way you get the automatic notices. I'm just learning how to do this. Automatic notices when a, when a show is coming up. So thank you for watching. Peace and sauce. Rest in peace. Mama Capra.